Contraception is not just a woman's issue. It is not just a moral issue or just a health issue or just a lifestyle issue. Since the USDA approved the combined oral contraceptive, more often known as the pill in 1960, the issue of contraception has had far-reaching effects across economic, political, and social lines. We examine the politics of contraception today on The Professors. From across the city and the seven city colleges of Chicago, broadcasting from 63rd and Halsted at Kennedy King College, professors take the art of conversation to a higher degree. I'm Rashid Carter from Olive Harvey College. Joining me today are professors Dr. Doris Espiritu from Wright College and also from Wright College, Dr. Patty Renda. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, let's get started. First, let's entertain the obvious question, what is contraception and why is it important? Well, when you say contraception, it is a method where you prevent pregnancy. And why is it important? Because a lot of actually people want to plan pregnancy or don't want to plan pregnancy. So you technically want to know when you can have the baby and can you support for it. So that method would actually um, prepare a couple, or especially women, empower the woman to make a decision of it herself. Okay. So contraception is about informed decision making, or just a variation on this whole notion of education when it comes to I, planning a, a family. I would actually agree. It is about a life choice, and of course, about educating yourself. Would you agree, Dr. Renda? Yes, uh, 100 um, percent. Contraception is an important. Um, concept and method for which people can use to people can use it to plan their families and make informed decisions about what they are doing to their lives as well as the lives of others. Very good. Now, Dr. Spirito, I know you have a lot of experience as a physiologist in terms of how contraception affects the human body. Right. Could you give us some in insight into the types of contraceptive methods and then how they might affect the human body? Well, there are several ways when you can use. There are several contraceptives, I would say. Um, I would say there are surgical methods. Well, this is probably the method that not everybody would prefer to use because it's a little bit invasive. Um, guys can have contraceptions as well. You can have vasectomy, which is, I don't know how you feel about that. Um, there is also tubal ligations. But um, right now, the most common and the most probably prescribed prescription of, of contraception is basically the pills the oral mm -hmm. contraceptions. There's also patches, there's also injectables, but all of them are basically intended for women and okay. they are hormonal. And how it affects the body depends on each individual woman. Okay. Each individual woman react differently to a different hormones that they've been injected. And once you put it in your body, you have to be prepared of what's going on and what's gonna happen. And there's always effect some might be good for you, some might have different effects in it. There's also what we call, of course, the most common one, which is condoms. Sure. And of course, that's, I would say, the most advantageous type of contraceptions because it prevents you from STIs and all those diseases, and then also prevent unplanned pregnancies. Okay. You can also have, which is what we call the calendar method. The calendar method is based on the woman's uh, period, and it is kind of a discipline thing, and most of the okay. time it doesn't work because it depend the knowledge depends really on the woman's knowledge of her body. Okay. So there's so many other things, but those are the most most basic um, contraceptions that are available. Okay, and then if we talk about this whole idea about people making good uh, behavioral decisions about how they go about living one's life, and then of course planning uh, uh, family. And then, you know, we, we want to promote proper uh, sex practices, right? We want people to make good decisions about these types of things. Of course, we also know that funding for Planned Parenthood is being cut. Right. Exactly. So how can this whole notion of educating and preparing individuals uh, from the time they're young to the time that uh, they leave this world to practice uh, good, safe, healthy, safe uh, sex practices, how might that be affected by this, this funding issue in, re in relation to Planned Parenthood? Pa Planned Parenthood excuse me. What is the dynamic that's happening today, and how might that affect this whole notion of family planning moving forward? Well, I think, um, you know, when you're talking about um, sex education, I mean, most of it should start in the home, and children 
ever, when they get to an appropriate age, need to understand what goes on and what can happen. And I think it needs to be true. I think it, the idea of sex needs to be normalized. And I mean, too many people, I think, have this notion, have skewed perceptions of what sex is or have strange relationships with their, strange might be a, an improper term, but um, prudish relationships with their bodies instead of having a healthy attitude about what sex actually is. I think in one, in some factions of society, they put too much emphasis on um, puritanical notions, and in other factions of society, they have morals that are completely, possibly too loose. Now you talk so, about the morals, I'm, I'm gonna cut you off, but you talk about the morals, how do the economics play a role in terms of how a person um, being a, a born or reared in a certain economic strata, would that also play a role in terms of how their decisions might be prompted by these decisions to defund Planned Parenthood? Is that also important in addition to the moral perspective? I, I really have no idea how it's going to pan out. I mean. I think that Planned Parenthood has done a great service to many, 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 many millions of women over the course of several years, and I think that the service Planned Parenthood has done, provided for um, these women have also benefited society as a whole. I mean, for example, one of the statistics that came through was that um, an estimated, it helped, Planned Parenthood being one of the Family Planning Services helped women avoid 1.94 million unintended pregnancies, which mm -hmm. would have potentially translated into 860,000 unintended births or 810,000 abortions. So, in terms of um, in terms of what Planned Parenthood has done to serve the community and to benefit society, and most Americans think that. I mean, some other statistics that came across from the research person was is that 86% of the American population thinks that having the pill available is a good thing for society. Very good. So. Yeah, and, and that was born out of some Pew Center research. And so that was very good um, data that gives us some idea about how the pulse of the nation feels about contraception in general. And the one thing that we also know from the research uh, from the federal government is that uh, for every dollar spent on contraception, in the long term, it usually leads to about $3.74 in savings for the nation, right? Because, of course, if you can better prepare families, um, plan families, then uh, you can make more efficient, efficient decisions. The government then doesn't necessarily have to step in when there's unplanned pregnancies and have to spend money on feeding a child, educating exactly. a child, et cetera. So, uh, but given that perspective, um, the, the, the opposite point of view might say, well, these are important issues, but should they be funded with public dollars? These are private decisions that individuals and households should make. So in that respect, shouldn't private dollars fund these decisions? And we already know that sex education happens in schools, in public schools, right? There usually is coursework specific to sex education. So how would you respond to that perspective, that, that this should be a private issue, not one supported by public, public funds? Well, I would actually say that, you know, since we as taxpayers pay something, so we should actually give something back to this particular issue. Um, I would believe that, yes, we would probably appropriate it correctly. I am a firm believer of education. I would, yes, you said that we already have um, funding towards sex education in education aspect of it. But we can also continuously fund it through the health centers, through the family centers that it's already there. And also we can reinforce the education aspect of it because once education is there, once people are informed, especially teenagers and low-income um, women or even men, then they will be able to make the correct, um, not, I would not say correct, but the right decision on what to do, how to plan their lives, and how to prevent all this possible, um, as you say, welfare things in the future if they don't know. Very good. I think it's basically a balance of things. Very good. Oh, I agree please. that I agree. I strongly agree that it's a balance of things. And I mean, almost four dollars. That's a three hundred percent return. If you put in one dollar, that's a three hundred percent return. I mean, it seems like that was a that's a much bigger return on an investment than um, some of the other projects that the federal government subsidizes through taxpayer money. So speaking um, of that, that's a good point. Now, so. We're talking about this issue of funding. Is this particular funding item a big part of our budget? No. 
from from my knowledge, it's not that big of a it's not that big of a slice of the pie. About how much is spent on well, uh, contraception in this country? In 2008, I think the number is like 5.1 billion dollars, okay. and that doesn't only count for the contraception that includes translation of from one language to another for those people who doesn't speak the language mm -hmm. that includes the education aspect paying the salary for those people who it's not just the contraception itself it's running it and what is 5.1 billion dollars compared to how much we spend on other things say for example defense so right, right. this is very important topic that i think or not topic an issue that the government should the federal and the state itself should give something and look forward to it. Right. And Doris, you mentioned defense. I mean, if we, even if we just looked at the amount of fraud that the Department of Defense has admitted went through the contractors, $284 billion what of is fraud. Five? Yeah. You know, I mean. What is $5.1 yeah. billion? I mean, dollars? It's a it, change. It, what it comes down to is, you know, we need to, as a country, we need to have, we need to straighten out our priorities. Well, very exactly. good. Ways. You know, it was interesting from those Pew Center uh, uh, research uh, reports or the data that's uh, culled from uh, those particular uh, uh, research paradigms. The thing that we know is that uh, contrary to popular belief, Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, liberals, there is a consensus there that um, there should be some form of uh, uh, contraceptive alternatives made available to individuals. At the very least, there should be some type of uh, compromise made in terms of educating people to make proper decisions. If that's the consensus, then what is fueling this unilateral uh, call to just cut funding altogether? Because that doesn't seem to be in lockstep with the consensus of the nation. It seems to me that ideology is playing a very big role here. And we should always be very uh, careful, especially here in America, about the tyranny of the minority in this case. So uh, do you think that this is an ideological issue more so than a practical, utilitarian, budget-cutting issue? I'm I, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Too polite, please. I do, I do, I do tend to agree with you on that. Um, and we were talking about this earlier, and I think that, that um, yeah, I think ideology comes into play. And I mean, if you, even if you just look at what happened in Wisconsin recently, it was it was proposed as this is a budget issue. The state is in crisis. The state is in crisis. Yeah. And then when it got pushed through, all it was about was getting rid of collective bargaining. So I think the um, idea that it's a budget issue and it's so important to save that $5.1 billion or whatever amount is actually on the table is, is disingenuous at best. Yeah, I, I would, I would uh, agree with that perspective just based on the data and also the perspective you just lent. It seems that if you uh, look at all of these recent decisions in regards to unions, um, in regards to, of course, um, this contraception issue or just um, proper, um, what I think is just proper health care in general, it seems that there is a push towards privatization. Um, but more so, it seems that there's, there's a concerted effort to move the country, not even to the center politically, but to the right. Right. I right. agree with that. And, and we can see that there are several um, problems going on. Several laws have been proposed across the United States that are um, anti-woman at best. I mean, to interpret them otherwise. For example, it was proposed in Georgia that all miscarriages be investigated mm. to make sure that they were not actual quote unquote right. murders. Yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, the people who are proposing that kind of thing talk about wanting small government or being against big government. And there's nothing, I mean, there's nothing bigger than a government that regulates somebody's body to the extent that they're going to investigate, you know, um, a miscarriage, for example. I mean, yeah. pretty soon they're going to be investigating normal menstrual periods, <laughs> which would just well, be. there's so many issues that would be pretty to scary. work on right. rather than, there's so many issues to yes. actually, we have to focus on rather than investigating a miscarriage. Right, there's so many, there, yeah, I mean, and the, uh, another thing that comes up in my mind, when I was doing, when I was looking at materials to prepare for this conversation, the infant mortality rate in this country compared to other countries who are industrialized is atrocious. Absolutely. 